Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we've got a blast from the past. This is a stripped down version of my custom discus display tank. Um, those of you who have been following the channel for a while will know there's been some trials and tribulations with this. But to give you a quick recap, basically we moved house almost exactly a year ago. Uh, and this tank, when I first set it up here, developed a leak. Uh, I was blaming the movers for this, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But it sat dormant because the place we wanted to keep this was actually in the hallway. We're in the kitchen at the moment, but we wanted to put this in the hallway, but the hallway floor was all gubbed, so that needed to be fixed and replaced. That's been done. We've had the new wood floor laid and we're ready to put this back. But first job is we need to fix the crack. Crack might be understating it somewhat. This is a, the tank itself is five foot by two foot by two foot and the base layer is split into two halves, so it's this whole half. The base is double skinned, so there's two layers of glass there and they're both broken. As you can see, it's not just a simple crack, it's a whole bunch of cracks. So that's the tank on top and then there's a steel stand and then the stand of the stand would sit normally, there's a four foot sump that sits there with a top off chamber on this side. Uh, and under here is where the problem is. So under the base there's this plywood board and I had put my heating controller there um, and if you can, it's hard to see, but there's a beam there. This again is also covered by a plywood board but what they'd done when they moved it was had wrapped this power cable around that beam and I couldn't see it. This beam runs under here and obviously that had created an artificial bulge here which was fine with just the weight of the tank but as soon as we put water in it that's when you've got the crack. And coincidentally, the biggest main crack across the bottom of the base is where this runs. So, totally their fault, but I should have noticed. So the plan to remedy all this is basically clean this down, get it as clean as I can. To do it properly, in inverted commas, I would take out both these broken panels and replace them with like size panels. But because it's the bottom, and because I'm inherently lazy, I've just bought a new panel in here, which I'm going to plop on top, and that should do just fine. There is reasoning behind this. If I take out this glass, and because it's shattered in the way it has shattered, if I miss any bits, that's just going to create another imbalance, and I'm at risk of having the same problem happen again. So any kind of pressure points, once the weight of all this water's on it, it's just going to make it crack again. So um, a two-pronged approach to that is acrylic rather than glass, so that has a little bit more strength and a little bit less shatterability uh, and I'm just going to clean it as it is and put this on top so I've still got these layers down here which will have inherent flexibility because they are cracked now put this on top we should be good to go it's a method that sounds daft but I have done it several times before over the years and it has never failed on me touch wood obviously I'll have to clean out all the silicon around this section of the tank maybe I'll just reseal the whole tank anyway um, and then reseal this back in. My plan is to run beads of silicon across the glass that's in, put this down on top and then seal it in. We should be good to go. Right, a final wipe down, uh, shop vacuuming it out, getting rid of any bits of dust or anything that's going to get in the way and contaminate things. A final wipe down and we're ready for silicon. Well, nearly ready for silicon. First, we check the sizes are correct. So this is an acrylic panel that I bought online. I will put links down in the description for any of this. It's by far the easiest way is to order it cut to size. So whether it's a local glazer and you're using glass or an online supplier, cuts down on the faff factor by a power of 10 if you get it cut to the right size. So here is the test of my measuring skills and their cutting skills. First time, but first of course, the satisfying bit of the peel. Got some double peel action on the other side as well. 
there we go. Now, just to clear a clear, it doesn't look blue, ready for silicon. So when it comes to silicon, I've got two different colors. I've got black because the tank itself uses black silicon on the outside, but I've got some clear that I just happen to have. So I'm gonna use this, it's HA6. This is good, that's fine, um, but any silicon will do. You're just looking for something that's 100% silicon, no mold inhibitors or anything like that. I'm gonna use the clear stuff because I've got lots of it and it's a bit cheaper. I'm gonna liberally apply that to the base down there, stick the acrylic on top of it, um, and then I'm gonna use the black stuff to seal around the outside. So the first application is really just gonna be as an adhesive. And there'll be lots of people in the comments going, but silicon doesn't stick to acrylic. Silicon does stick to acrylic. Silicon sticks to everything. It's very hard to not stick to things with silicon. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, even if it's not the most powerful bond in the world, all the pressure is going to be down. So I just wanted to stick it in place, hold it, and then the seal around the outside again will all be held in place by the power of the water. The weight of the water will hold that in place. It'll be absolutely fine. Done it dozens of times, it's always been fine. Nice big thick bead, so I'm gonna probably cut it halfway down rather than the fine stuff up at the top. We'll get it down about here. Splurge it everywhere. If it comes out the size, I don't care, that's fine. So hopefully, as you can see, I've done an entire tube of silicon with a big thick bead. I'll put the acrylic on top of that and compress it down with some weights or something hold it in place, and then we'll wait for that to cure. Maybe not completely, but I'll, I'll give it a few hours and then we'll do the seal around the outside. So given that a couple of hours, um, just it's not gone off by any stretch of the imagination, but it's enough to get it started, get it in place. So now I'm gonna go around with the black silicon and make sure that we get the seal around the edges all done properly. So I wasn't trying to be especially neat and that is a task I completed with great success. So I've got a couple of splodges here. The beads aren't that brilliant. They're fat, they're thick. That bit was by purpose, obviously the splodges weren't. I'm gonna let them dry off, cure properly, get in there with the razor blade afterwards and I can scrape off these little mistakes. That should be no problem. So now it's a waiting game. So given a couple of days, a uh, bit more than that actually, everything's had plenty of time to cure. I'm just gonna do a test fill now. That's the only way we're gonna see whether or not it holds water. As it's filling, I, I'm just keeping an eye on it, basically seeing all the bits that have resealed, whether or not I can see anything going on. And then once it's full, leave it for a couple of days again, just to make sure we can handle the pressure, the weight of the water, all that kind of stuff. And it's gonna be good, so we shall see. Right, it's been filled for a little while and there have been issues. So I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on camera, but basically from here to here is a little puddle of water and then here all the way up to the back there is now one continuous puddle of water where it started as one puddle there and another puddle right at the back. By process of deduction, <laughs> There's a little pinhole there, because that's where it started and grew from. Another one down there, because that's where it started and grew from. And another tiny one at the front, which started around here. So I need to drain that, cut back the silicon here and reapply basically, and then do it all over again. Yay. Several days later, we had a water test for almost a week. I think we did six days. So far, so good. I uh, didn't film any of that because that was quite boring, just sitting watching water be wet. Uh, but we've moved the tank in, we've clad it again, got it ready, just to tidy the house more than anything else. But now we've got to the bit that's actually exciting, actually some fun stuff. We're gonna start scaping it. As ever with my somewhat lacking aquascaping credentials. I have a vague idea of what I'm trying to achieve, but nine times out of 10 when I start this, it's kind of a case of getting in there, putting some rocks, some wood, some sand, some gravel, whatever we're going to do and move things around until I'm happy. I do know that I want to have a little bit of height. There's a couple of different viewing angles that we could take for this one. So we could either be have people coming from the kitchen, which is over here, the living room, which is that door there, or the front door, which is down there. So. I think I want some height slightly off to the side on the right hand side of this one. 
um, tapering down here with maybe some rocks and uh, wood either all pointing that way or all pointing that way. I need to mess around with it and see what I like best, basically. So let's get started. One trick you'll have seen me use before to get some height and elevation into a scape is to use these filter bags. These are actually vegetable bags from Aldi. I've used them with Alpha Grog and excess bits of filter material, but I just happen to have a lot of gravel, so I'll fill them with gravel. And you can just kind of plop them in. Gravel's actually better because it seems to be a little bit more malleable. So, as I said, I'm going to start thinking just off centre, have a rise to the right hand side. Um, just going to lay them in, get a few in, and we'll see how it looks. It's not a lot, but it gives us a few inches that we don't have to fill with expensive hardscape or sand to get that sense of height. Trust me, I think it'll work in the end. So in terms of rocks, I'm just reusing some old ones. I've got some old Seru stone, various different colours. I think this is a black one and a white one. You know, they both look grey to me, but who knows. But I've got some rocks. I've got some of my more pointier bits of bog wood that I can add some directionality with. So I think, anyway. And while I do want to scape this, we're going to have some rocks, we're going to have some wood. I am going to plant it. I want, I want that almost to be shoved away in the corner because I want more swimming space than anything else. If I've learned anything about discus is if you give them a place to hide, they will hide there. It's not going to necessarily be a minimalist scape, but I do want lots of open swimming and some of the other fish, you may have to click that subscribe button to find out what I end up stocking in here, should give lots of movement to the tank and encourage discus to stay out. But for now, it's a case of getting some stuff in there and start messing around with it, so I shall get on with that. After 30 minutes of farting about, we've kind of ended up with this arrangement, which might not be the final, but I quite like it. We've got kind of two main focal points here. These trees, this is actually two bits of bogwood. This is actually two as well. That one might be three, actually. Sweeping towards that side. So rocks, I was trying to create some kind of feeling with the rocks of going the same direction, but I kind of like the contrasting random nature, and that's not just a cop-out for <laughs> giving up and leaving it as it is, but I, I kind of like that. The rocks were rocks were chosen because they kind of match the... I mean, not, not totally, but they kind of match the colour scheme that's in with the, the panels. So... What I've gone in with and filled in, there's a void over here that's going to be quite good for planting. Um, I've just filled this with some old substrate, so there's a mix of aqua soil, sand, stuff from old tanks. So it'll be fairly nutrient heavy for anything that I plant in there, but it's more just to fill out some gaps. So I can then come in with the actual substrate, the top, the sand that I want on top. Which I'm hoping again will complement both the rocks and this. I'm a bit worried that the rocks will get a bit lost because it's a similar colour. But we'll see. I kind of like that. Again, loads of swimming space. This whole side's pretty much free. Be planting in and around the rocks and the wood. Hmm. So far, so good. Let's get some sand in. Sand isn't anything particularly special. I think I got it from TM Aquatics on eBay. I just picked the thing that was closest to the colour I was going for. And I'm kind of happy with it as it is dry, so we'll see how it goes in wet. I've got 50 kilos of it, so we should have plenty to cover all this. Let's get it in. I don't know how well it's coming across in the camera, but I really like the colour. It's it's not grey, it's not silver, but it's when you get really close it's got flecks of all those colours. And I do quite like this. I think we're missing something. I think we might need a third bit of wood somewhere around here. So it's when viewed from this angle, you've got one, two, and then a smaller third. I think I might be able to fix that with a piece of wood that I have down in the fish room. I felt there was something missing on this side. So we've got the two main focal things. Works better in threes. I just couldn't find the right thing, so I've slept on it. Gone and done a bit more of a hunt. And I think this might be the piece. It's amazing what you can find in your garage. So I'm going to try that and see if that works any better. If you say we're happy with that for now, and I won't change it later. I have a big, big tree of plants. Um, got all kinds of things in here, mainly crypts. 
Anubius, um, got some Java Fern, got some Lilies, got some really, really, really pathetic Amazon Swords, but hopefully they'll come back. Um, and I'm just mostly going to try, I've got these, um, I really like these ones, so this is the Crypt Balancé or Balancé, I'm not sure how you say it, but going for these ones. Kinda as a background plant because they will grow quite big and be quite flowy so I'm going to try and keep them mainly centralised. I don't want them getting sucked into the overflow, don't want them getting hammered by the return. So in the middle towards the back, let them grow up and just dot all over, everything else around about it. See how we get on. So you can see we've got the hose in there so you know what's coming next but that's what we've come up with so far. I must stop saying we because it's just me. <laughs> um, if anything, I'd like a few more plants in there. I wanted to have that, even though it's raised, still have fairly smallish plants, just so it's a bit green and jungly. But I'm kind of happy with the rest of it. When it fills out a bit, it should look really good. Again, down here, I might move these actually and put them up there and then have this Java fern bush come around the front rather than around the back. I was worried that I might block things off. I don't know. We'll play around with that as we're filling. So I'll make these last few tweaks and then we'll get water in. I've got a plastic bag at the ready. Put that down over the sand so it doesn't disturb too much and we'll get it filled. Um, a good tip while you're working on planting your tank but you don't actually have water in it yet is a squishy bottle. Otherwise known as a spray bottle. But a squishy bottle, give everything a good squish every few minutes, keep things nice and moist. Moist. Right, another couple of days later, this might be the longest video I've ever filmed. I can't even remember what it's meant to be about other than this tank. But anyway, we're full of water, we've got all the plants in, it's all escaped, nothing leaks. I've spent the last couple of days fixing every bit of leaky pipe work that there is. Basically, every bit of pipe work had its own little tiny leak. So I've had to go around everything, sort it all out, but touch wood, we're sorted now. So the only thing that remains is to get some fish in there. So obviously we're going to have discus in there. What else is going in? Even now I'm still slightly undecided, but I'm just going to go and choose some fish and put them in and we'll see how we get on. In terms of filtration, obviously we've got the sump under here. Um, the sump in here's got loads of filter media in it already, but it's the, it's the old dry stuff. What I'm going to do is to take the sponge filters, any filter media from the filters from the tanks of the fish that are moving up here, put it in there and that should give me the instant cycle because if those filters are coping with the fish at the moment, they'll cope with them in this new tank. A little bit of a bacterial bloom um, going on, which you get often with new tanks all the time. Bit of a pain for filming, but it is what it is. It's not going to hurt the fish. Let's get them in there. Microphone died, so I'll have to narrate this bit. So the first fish are obviously going to be discus. This was my discus display tank. So that's what I wanted it to be again. Um, these fish are the Martin Ung discus. I am mixing these with Puncher's Discus. Um, if you want to see a video about quarantining and how I quarantined them to check that they were going to be okay and compatible, go back and check that out. I shall leave a link somewhere. Um, as well as them, we've got these are the Puncher's Discus going in. As well as them, I had already decided that I wanted to have Stair by Corydoras in there. I think they're fantastic companion fish. Corydoras, at the best of times, I think they're they're just great little fish, but the stair buys can handle the heat a little bit better. I am planning on keeping this slightly cooler than what you would normally keep a discus tank at. I'm, I'm aiming at 28 to 28 and a half to keep it on the low end, to keep the energy bills down at this time of year. But there's the Corridoras going in. The last fish, for now anyway, never say never, but the last fish for now was between two. I have my um, Congo Tetras and my Dwarf Neon Blue Rainbow Fish. Pros and cons for each. So it was a tough decision. The, the Dwarf Neon Tetra is not perfect because the temperature range is really at the top of their range. The Congo Tetras, I was a bit worried because they basically, I thought they ate all my plants in the Congo tank. And the ravenous feeders, uh, I don't know if they're going to outcompete the discus. So this is by any stretch, this is just an experiment to see whether or not this works. Um, I've gone with the Congos because I've been watching them for a long time and they haven't actually been eating the plants, so maybe it was just me poorly setting the tank up and the, the plants just died off. 
It might have been one of the other fish in that tank that was eating the plants, but yeah, I've not seen them do that. But again, something I'll just have to look out for. Uh, I've raised the temperature in both the Congo tank and the Dwarf Neon Rainbow tank just to see how they fared. And to be fair, both look like they were fine with the temperature. So if the Congos don't work out, we might get the Dwarf Neons in here. I think both having that iridescence, it's just that the final je ne sais quoi, setting off the tank for just that little bit of movement, iridescence and colour. So we'll get them in, see how they look. Congos are a very... They're a go-to companion fish for discus quite a lot of the times, um, so I'm not doing anything that's too out there. I, I am including the Alestes tetras in here. Again, the temperature range is a little bit high for them, but we'll just monitor them and see how we get on. But I've got most of them in the bucket down here. I couldn't get, they're the most difficult fish to catch so fast, but we'll get them in and see how they look. One of the good things about these tetras is they're always on the move. So there'll be lots of movement. A lot of the time the discus will just stand, stand swim perfectly still, just looking all beautiful and stuff, whereas the, the tetras are always on the go, back and forward, back and forward. Um, I'm not sure how many we've got. We've probably got about 20 or so at the moment. Got a few more down there, but we'll catch, catch up with the rest of them later in the week. So now it's just the most important part with any new tank is just time. We need to wait. Uh, let everything settle down, let this cloudiness clear out. I want to have nice crystal clear water in here, but it, it, this just happens with new tanks. Um, everything will get a bit more comfortable, the colours will start to come out, and we should have a, a lovely tank. There we have it, a year in the making, getting this big tank up and running again. But at last, behold, my fish tank! <laughs> I couldn't be happier with it as it is at the moment. I've got all my discus in here. We've got the Congo Tetras, the Alestes Tetras. We've got the Sterby Corydoras planted up with a bit of a minimal planted hardscape. It's not overgrown with plants. I'm hoping they will fill out a little bit. We've got a nice busy tank. We've got the Congos and the Alestes back and forward. The discus not hiding. I, I kind of predicted to myself that they'd all just go straight behind all those big bits of wood and hide. But already the colours are coming up. The water's starting to clear, we're getting getting it to a really nice tank, I, I love the plants. More scope for them to really come through in the coming weeks and months. We can always add more as well, maybe a little bit more decoration. I wanted to do something with some maybe scattered pebbles and rocks and down there just to finish it off, but we'll get to that eventually. I'm happy, it's back, it's running, it's here. It's been a year for me to get this tank back up and running, it feels like it's been a year just to <laughs> just to get to this point filming this video. Apologies if it's been hugely long and rambling, but I'm really happy with this. The fish look healthy, they look happy, they're out, the colours are starting to come through. Like I say, it's cleared up quite a lot, there's a little bit more to go. But yeah, I'm, I'm totally on board with how this is looking. If you like this kind of thing, please click that subscribe button because there's going to be more videos on this tank, obviously. It's going to be my main display tank. It's going to be a feature of the house. I love how it's sitting, I love the look that you get when you come in through the door and you get to see all the fish. It's just fantastic. I, I couldn't be happier. So click that subscribe button and you can see the development of this tank over the years. <sighs> just happy. Thank you for joining me. See you in the next one. Enjoy some fishy pictures. Bye.